Hello, my name is Andy, and I am the village idiot, and a mom with a car and a GoPro, and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. Welcome back to the city of Leeds once again. Now, today you find me starting this one off in a housing estate on a footpath that runs between two interconnected streets. All of these streets around here have the same first part of their name, and that's Primrose Hill. That's because they're all named after a former colliery, which was right here where these houses are now standing. It was called Primrose Hill Colliery. And you'll find these houses and the former colliery in Swillington. Swillington is a village and civil parish near Leeds, situated five miles east of Leeds city centre. It lies north of the River Eyre and is surrounded by streams including Fleekingly Beck. In 2001, Swillington had a population of about 3,530, which reduced to 3,381 at the 2011 census. The village forms part of the Garforth and Swillington Ward of Leeds City Council and was a coal mining village until the closure of Primrose Hill Pit. It's a primarily residential village. As such, a housing estate now sits on the former site of the colliery. The village is just a stone's throw away from RSPB St Aidan's Nature Reserve and the Leeds Country Way, a long distance footpath, passes through the village too. The name Swillington is first attested in the Doomsday Survey in three different forms which are very difficult to pronounce. I'll put them in a caption at the bottom of the screen at this point. The etymology is uncertain, but probably derives from the Old English swin, or swine, meaning pig. The Dictionary of British Place Names suggests it means farmstead near the pig hill or clearing. Historically, Swillington's full title was Swillington in Elmet, which refers to the association of the village with the region of Elmet, which we've met previously. However, as with many other places, the in Elmet part has been lost in modern times, with only a few exceptions still surviving. For example, Sherburn in Elmet and Barwick in Elmet. This is interesting on Neville Grove. So we've got some houses here, which look like they potentially were at one time shops. And the reason I'm saying that is because they don't seem to fit in uh, with the, the rest of the street. And also we've got a post box outside, just randomly here, and a bus stop and a little pull-in. Were these shops Swillington locals? Whilst some residents commute to the nearby cities of Leeds and Wakefield or the larger towns of Garforth or Rothwell, many residents are able to make their livelihood right here in the village. The Astley Lane Industrial Estate provides a good number of jobs in many different fields of industry. Almost certainly, the village's biggest employer is the multinational award-winning specialist lubricants manufacturer, Rocol. Also, electricity company YEDL has its overhead line school here in Swillington too. Swillington has no railway station, but it does have a piece of railway history in the form of HS2. Phase 2 of the HS2 rail link was originally intended to be built close to the western side of the village, running adjacent to the M1 motorway. With the scheme now scrapped, this is no longer relevant to the village anymore. As a coal mining village, there were pits here, though they were worked out and closed some years before the industry itself was all but destroyed. There was also a brickworks, Hansons, which is now abandoned. There's a picture of it and its blue lagoon in today's picture bit. Several of Swillington's streets are named after Sir John Lowther, better known as Lord Lowther. Lowther was the first baronet of Swillington and was an English landowner and MP. Both Lord and Lady Lowther are buried in the graveyard of St Mary's Church. Swillington's demographics look like this. It covers a wide area, some 10.45 square kilometres, which gives it a population density of 335.1. Most of the people that live here identify as white British, some 97.7%. The average house price here is a tidy £190,000.
There are six bus services you can catch in the village, most of them terminate in Castleford, Wakefield and Leeds. The 174 also provides a link to Weatherby. Swillington has plenty of shops and certainly doesn't need to rely on the much bigger neighbours like Garforth or Kipax. Most of them, including a small Tesco supermarket, are located at the junction of the A642 and Astley Lane. There's a post office and also a pharmacy at this junction. Indian Spice is a local curry house and I can't honestly say that I've ever seen one like this before with a huge menu on the exterior wall. So I couldn't resist coming past Indian Spice without having a look at the menu which is right here. <laughs> Let's see, I do like a good curry. Let's see. Yeah, not bad prices to be fair. It's not the only Indian food you can get here either. On the A642 you'll come across this building, the Grand Indian Lounge. Around the corner on Church Lane there's a restaurant called Table 26, which is directly opposite a village chip shop, Swillington Fisheries. So Swillington is certainly not short of anything amenities wise is it? Absolutely not plenty of food and drink places and there's something on the outskirts of the village which is where this video will end today that's also food and drink related. There's a former petrol station which has now been turned into a car wash on the main A642 Wakefield Road. There's also a shooting and country sports supply business too, not something you see everywhere. So that's the North Lodge behind me. Now a little bit later, I'll be taking a short drive to the south of Swillington to catch or try to catch what's down there. I'm not sure if it's a public road or private road. Won't know until I get there. But let's finish the main walk first. The Parish Church of St. Mary is a grade two listed building of 14th or 15th century origin with Victorian additions. The church hosts many groups, including a keen bell ringing team. St Mary's is one of the churches in the united benefice of Allerton Bywater, Kipax and Swillington. There's been a church at this location for at least 900 years. The Doomsday Book notes that a church is here, but there's no records of the original building now remaining. Now, have you ever wondered why confetti is thrown at weddings? Swillington holds a part of that answer. Thomas Diltry, rector of Swillington from 1872 to 1878, is credited with having introduced the habit of throwing confetti from his observation of rice thrown at Hindu weddings in his previous position as Archdeacon of Madras. The local school, Swillington Primary School, has about 270 pupils. In the grounds of the school is Swillington Village Hall, available for hire both during the day and into the evening, seven days a week. You'll find Swillington Clinic on Hillcrest Close in the west of the village on a large housing estate. Pubs wise, there's a couple. First up, the Astley Arms, a local family run pub which sells itself by saying it welcomes customers both old and new through their doors to enjoy a friendly and fun atmosphere. And on the A642 we have Swillington Sports and Social Club, which has live entertainment every Tuesday and most Saturday nights. This is a handy transition into sports and recreation next, which means taking a walk around the back of the club. There's a smallish play area here, and this whole area is open plan enough that punters from the club and the Astley Arms can access it. Here are the main sports grounds. The village has four local football teams amongst a plethora of other sports teams. These recreational grounds survive from Swillington's mining days. Here's what is fast becoming the channel's obligatory shot, the daily dose for all those allotment fans. And to the south of the village and opposite the industrial estate, you'll come across Astley Riding Centre, which appears to occupy quite a lot of land to the village's southwest. The old schoolhouse in Swillington was built with funds given by Lord Lowther. It's feeling the weight of its years, but nevertheless it's still used and loved by many local groups. The War Memorial is next. You'll find this lovely structure in the grounds of St Mary's Church. You 
know, sometimes you think you know where all the landmarks are. I had no idea about this before I came here. It's a blue plaque in memory of Gregory Mokes. It says, it's a bit worn away, devoted councillor for 42 years. And there's a colliery memorial here too. A former employee of Primrose Hill paid £1,100 for this pit tub to be constructed, which has been filled with primroses in memory of the old mines grafters. So let's see where the colliery was. This is the Primrose Hill estate where the colliery was sited. The only clues as to where it was now are the street names. Astley Lane Industrial Estate was also built on part of the colliery site. Primrose Hill opened in 1893 and at its peak employed more than 1,000 people. It closed in 1970, after which many of its workers found jobs at other pits in the surrounding areas. Of course, Primrose Hill wasn't the only colliery in Swillington. Astley was here as well, which according to the maps I found was actually located in Great and Little Preston's boundaries, just to the south of Little Preston. Regardless, both collieries are remembered by name here in Swillington. Now, believe it or not, because Swillington's parish boundaries are quite big, there is actually something else which falls within them, and that is a lock, Woodlesford Lock. I've had to come out of Swillington and down to the south, and we're just about to go and see the lock now. For some strange reason, Swillington's boundaries include Woodlesford Lock. Otherwise, the unparished area of Woodlesford lies to the south of the village. It's the only part of the air and colder navigation that falls within the boundaries. The river otherwise forms part of the parish's southern boundary. Woodlesford Lock is described as one of the best places to escape the city and enjoy country walks. The navigation was built to connect Leeds to the Humber and the North Sea. We haven't seen much of this canal before in truth. A lot of it falls within unparished areas such as Rothwell. Unique to this navigation were Tom Puddings, huge open containers for carrying coal, linked together and pushed along by tugs. The waterway still carries some commercial traffic today, mainly though it just makes its way through peaceful countryside. Yeah, funny things, parish boundaries. For some strange reason, Woodlesford Lock on the air and colder navigation falls within Swillington. I'm just going to take a perch on this bench for a moment in memory of Jack Pickles. Thank you, Mr. Pickles, for providing me with this seat to introduce today's picture bit for Swillington. And here it comes. Okay, so you'll recall me saying earlier that I didn't know whether this road was a public road or a private road. Well, it actually turns out to be neither. It's a bridleway, and so legally speaking, I cannot drive down it. Where we are here is the entrance to Swillington Farm on the former Lowther Estate. It's an organic farm which has been frequented by celebrity chefs, and its produce was voted the best meat in Yorkshire in 2007. As you can see, there's plenty of other things going on here as well. Even a music festival in July, apparently. Now we're skirting close to Leaventhorpe Hall, a Grade 2 listed house built in 1774. Here's one of the gate lodges on Newsom Green Road. We're not here to see that, as it's private property and we can't access it. George Bowden's Leaventhorpe Vineyard, however, produces some very well-respected wines, such as Saval and Madeleine Angervine. This was established in 1985 and has been recommended by TV chef Rick Stein. 
It was until recently the most northerly commercial vineyard in Britain, there's now another one further north near Moulton. Leventhorpe is an ideal site for wine growing and one of the very few vineyards that lie within a large city boundary anywhere in the world. So I've got to tell you that's not the easiest thing I've ever caught on camera. Lack of a footpath. <laughs> so I had to go round the back as it were along Newsom Green Road to catch the first part and then walk back down the road which is not easy. I wouldn't advise it to anybody who wants to try and see Leventhorpe Vineyard. I wouldn't advise doing, doing what I just did. But you know, this is part of the reason why I wear a high vis because sometimes I just never know what situations I'm going to get myself into. Anyway, that is Swillington in all its glory. Another one down in the city of Leeds. Time for me to move on to my next one. I've been Andy, also known as the Village Idiot, and this has been the Parish of Swillington, and I'm out. Yeah.